Um, so yeah, uh, Tobias is going to be uh, presenting in just a moment here. I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on the webinar, first of all. Uh, the character that he's going to be creating in this webinar is the character that you see on the screen right now, this kind of uh, cool-looking orc character, all snazzily dressed up in his, uh, in his suit. Not very orc-like, but, uh, you know, this is what we're going to be uh, creating in this, uh, in this webinar here. Tobias, rather, will be creating this. Um, so just a little bit of introduction about him as well. He's an I a long-term iClone user. So he's been using iClone and Character Creator, a, a developer, for uh, quite a long time now. I'm not even sure how long. We don't want to date ourselves, uh, really. Uh, but he's also a freelancer. He does uh, animation and game projects for uh, various clients around the world. And he often integrates uh, Realism products into his production pipeline. Uh, and he's aiming to offer full service for real-time animation and visualization. And along with this webinar, I'm just going to switch to a uh, my Google Chrome window here. So we're going to be having a live demo, like I mentioned before. Um, I didn't mention that yet, I guess. We have a live demo that we're going to be, uh, Tobias is going to be presenting for you guys. And uh, after that, we're going to have a brief 10-15 uh, minute Q&A session. So if you have any questions about the procedure uh, that we're going through or any questions about Reillusion or... Uh, iClone products in general, feel free to ask us. Put them in the questions section of your GoToWebinar panel there, and we'll get to those in the last uh, uh, 10 minutes or so of the webinar before the hour. All right, and we're also going to be sending out a $10 gift certificate from the content store uh, to you guys, uh, but you need to fill out a survey. So we're going to be emailing you a survey. Make sure you fill out that survey, and we'll be providing you with a $10 gift, kit, a gift certificate for the content store, rather. And a little bit of uh, background about uh, Tobias's stuff here. So you can find Tobias's stuff if you go to the content store, uh, Tokamotion uh, stuff here. Go to 3D Assets under iClone. And if you go down to uh, Elite League Collections, we have a featured developer section down here. So this is where you find all the best content uh, for in the content store here. And you can find Tokamotion right here. And you can find all the stuff right here. But, however, for the attendees of this webinar, we have a special offer on, uh, on Tokamotion Assets. Uh, we're going to be emailing this out to you. So this is a special offer just for you guys uh, that goes until May the 13th. And uh, this is a 35% off offer for all Tokamotion content. You can, uh, we'll be sending out this page for you guys there. And you can see all sorts of uh, different assets, like really cool uh, Toon Light characters, uh, unique styles uh, that you can uh, pick up uh, for a fraction of the price that you would normally pick them up for. Now, keep in mind that this offer is only good until May 13th, so you got to act in the next few days, and uh, you'll be able to pick up all the Tokamotion stuff uh, for 35% off that you want. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to be, be basically be handing this over to Tobias in just a moment here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute Tobias. Uh, Tobias, can you hear me there? Hello. Hello. All right, there we go. <laughs> hey, can you hear me today? Yeah, we can hear you today. Awesome. Um, yeah, I guess what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hand the reins over to Tobias. I'm going to make him the presenter and uh, allow him to just, you know, proceed with his live demo. And then we'll have the Q&A session at the very end. So you should be able to see his screen popping up here in just a minute. And once we do, we can get go ahead and uh, get started with the webinar. There we go. Okay, I can see that. Hopefully, everyone else can see it. Um, all right. Okay, so, good, so we can you, you can see my screen. <laughs> yeah, I can see your screen and hear and you. you. You're good to go. <laughs> That's perfect today. So uh, thanks, Kai, for this uh, nice introduction, and welcome everyone to this webinar, to this live demo. Well, I also apologize apologize for the uh, um, technical issues that we had last week. So I hope uh, today everything will be fine and yeah um, I think most of you already saw that uh, uh, the webinar recording that I did last week creating this vampire character and so we thought maybe it would be a good idea to present something new to you today so I switched um, the live demo to the orc character so I want to show you how I created this orc here uh, today and I will mainly use the same principles that I used uh, when creating the vampire but we'll show you some additional little tricks uh, how you can work with character creator and create your uh, characters there so in general I will show you how you can use the morphs uh, in character creator to create a 
Cryptoorg and I will show you how you can adjust the skin textures using the appearance editor. Well, this time I will use a texture from the Realistic Human 100 pack that is also available in the Revolution content store because I think uh, they have slightly better visuals uh, than the standard uh, substance skin textures. So I will also show you again my standard a standard um, lighting setup for CC and will also uh, work with sculptures again but this time I will not uh, adjust the mesh of the character itself but we will fine-tune uh, the mesh of the cloth a little bit uh, so yeah and in the end I will export everything to iClone and create a, a quick little animation or something like this we will see and then we have the uh, question and answer at the end so I think we can just start from the beginning and Let's jump to character creator here. And as you can see, I already have the, uh, the standard male shape character loaded. So you should just press always the reset button when you first start character creator and then you can morph any character you want. And uh, I will do this now for the orc with my stylus creatures pack. And here you have all the creatures and here's the orc head that I need. And I will do the same for the body here. Status creatures and I have to orc body. Okay, so this is it. This is it for the for the orc morph. And I will not morph anything else now, but just apply the texture. Um, and as I said before, I will use one of the realistic human 100 pack. And here you can see with this pack. There's a lot of additional textures for male and also for female characters that you can apply to, to your characters. And I would really recommend to test this out on CC PBR uh, characters because it looks fantastic in my opinion. So let me just choose one of, I think this guy will look quite good. So you just need to drag and drop it to the character and then just deselect the import head morph because we have our own morph here but we just want to import the textures for the head and body. Press OK and then it calculates a little bit so just some seconds. Oh, come on. There it is. So it looks quite good. I mean, if you have a closer look on the face, uh, especially on the face textures, it looks quite, or even, yeah, now with the, with the low resolution, it looks quite good. I usually tend uh, to replace the material of the eye to the, to the default materials here that you can find in the, in the template folder go to the morphs uh, tab here and then the eyeball and then you have some uh, default eye materials here and for the I think for the orc there's this purple eye and I just replace the material because this looks a little bit better than the ones that come with a with the texture here okay so the good thing f uh, with the reillusion uh, with a realistic human 100 pack is that you also can use the, uh, the appearance editor to further customize the texture. So just uh, open the appearance editor, oh, not for the eye, but for the, for the actor, of course. So just need to calculate a little bit. Hmm. There it is. 
All right, and you can use all the different uh, tabs here that uh, are included in the appearance editor to, to further customize. So, for example, if you want to have him uh, to give him a beard or whatever, just go to the beard section, and then it will be applied even on the realistic human 100 textures here. But I think I will not give him a beard here, but um, I think I would just, for the first step, reduce the, the situation a little bit to make him look pale, so make him a little bit more orcish looking, maybe increase the lightness a little bit. It looks quite good, I think. And then we can also give him some decals here. So just go to the diffuse field here and search for the, how is it called? I think it's in the essential learning package. And there we find some textures. Um, I think it should be safe when you when you get it from the content store. I think it should be saved in the shared templates folder here. And here you have no, it's not there. Um, 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 let me check this again. Ah, I think uh, I we'll think my essential out. learning pack was uh, was saved as a separate file. Like you, I think you download a separate file for for all those uh, files. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> not sure if that helps. So maybe we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not yet. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I think we just give him some freckles here to further customize the skin. So, can also give him some another color. Something like this and increase the scale a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit too pinky here. Yeah, it's really up to you how you want to customize your character. Just, just want to show you that you can uh, put any kind of uh, additional elements on the skin as well. All right, so I think that's that's enough for this for the skin change. Let me just increase the texture size here so that we can see the beautiful visual of the texture. Um, even for the body, I think I, we don't need it for the body because he will get some cloth on. And that's it. Just unload the appearance editor. And let's, let me just create the stun or my uh, standard CC atmosphere settings here. I usually use this uh, HDI number six to light my scene. Okay. And then we just need to go to the visuals tab. I think it's F7. That's all right. And then you can make some adjustments to the IBL here in this section. So, for example, you could um, make the background invisible or visible again. And you can even soften the background here to create some kind of depth of field effect, like so. You could also increase the strength of the lighting here to make it brighter or darker 
but I think the default settings are quite good here. Yeah, and the next step would be to create some kind of ambient occlusion by selecting this and bring this up a little bit. Could even visualize the ambient occlusion to have uh, or to see the details here better. So I think this looks quite good. And then in general I changed the setup of the light using the uh, two lights that come that are included in the scene, so the key and rim light. And I usually tend to give the rim light this bluish color here. And I also want to increase the the strength to see it one. And for the key light I usually use this aqua color and this brings or this uh, gives the character a, really a nice look so the, the skin looks really nice in this lighting scene. Of course it depends which atmosphere uh, you choose because uh, the atmosphere that I have in the scene is really has some kind of brown or, or warm color so a cool light color will make the perfect companion for such a such an IBL here. So I think we can also increase the shadow. This is also really a nice feature in the new version of CC and iClone to have uh, yeah, control over the shadow of each light. And there it is. So looks quite nice but I think because we use the appearance editor I think we have to adjust the textures again so check the textures tab here and as you can see the shader type switched back to traditional but we want PBR and we don't need to do it for each material separately but you just need to uh, press the first and then with shift select select everything and use this little button here at the top this two arrow button and then you can convert every uh, material at once so this would take a little bit of time but it's really a cool feature in CC Maybe I can search for the, where do I have saved this, I can't really remember. Hey Tobias, I'm going to try something. There's a, there's a handout section there in, in the GoToWebinar panel, um, I haven't actually yeah. Use that before. I think we can try an experiment. I'm going to try and drag. Um, I think the scars you're looking for, right, from the character creator essential pack. Yes. That you're looking for. Okay. I have those. Uh, yes. Uh, ready to go. I might just try and drop them into the. Uh, um, where are they here? Scars. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, there's there's a double scar because they're all in folders here. Okay. Yes. Um, and you need the normal map and the specular map, I guess, too. So I'm, I'm going to just try and click and drag the diffuse and the, and the normal map into the handout section. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Okay. Did that work for anybody? No. I don't see it. Sorry. Never actually used this feature before, guys. Sorry about that. So we'll just try and uh, I'm going to try and load it up manually here. I yeah. tried to click and drag and the click and drag didn't work, so I'm gonna try and do it manually. Okay. You can go go ahead and continue. I'm just gonna try and find it. Yes, yes, yes. So um the next step is I usually tend to work on the cornea here, on the texture, so on the roughness to give it back a little bit of a, yeah, of um of a reflection of the light. As you can see at the moment it's really dull. So just uh, double right-click the roughness uh, 
panel here and you will have the adjust color window opened and then just work with the brightness to bring back the, uh, the specular in, in his eyes. So I think minus 50 will work quite well here. And then you can see if we just move the key light so, so with hotkey E, you can move the key light and there it is, the reflection looks quite good. And I think I will also change the position of the rim light a little bit. It looks like those handouts work. The files, the files uploaded there, so I'm not sure if you can uh, see in the in the handout section there. Ah, should appear. Here it is. One. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I was trying to I was trying to um, click and drag all four at once, and it didn't work. So, yeah. So everyone yeah. has these files now. You can go ahead and just Perfect. follow along. <laughs> All right, thank you. No worries. All right, so just let me finish the, the lighting here. All right. And yeah, that looks really nice. You could also uh, change the rotation of the IBL uh, using the shift I uh, short key and then you can rotate the IBL here directly in CC to find the right um, position, but I think that looks quite nice. Yeah, and as you can see, maybe we just can just the uh, reflection on the on the skin texture as well using the head, and then the roughness. Double right click the roughness roughness tab again and again work with the brightness here and I think yeah minus 30 will look quite good and let's do the same with the body yeah and I think that's mainly it for the skin texturing and for the light setup and as you can see it really looks nice here in character creators so you have this beautiful reflections on the skin and yeah, I really love it. All right, let's go on and give the character a little bit of or his his great suit. So his maybe it's not not really orcish, but um, I really like the suit on him. So I think we should give him pants from the professional outfit, the slacks here. It's like the black slacks. And uh, a shirt also from the professional outfit. This close colored. All right, and then the suit itself. I think it's in this. Where do I have this? I know where shirt, not pants. Okay, skirt, coat. Ah, it's in coat section. Okay, business suit. There it is. So I think we can give it the blue one. And slightly change the color using the appearance editor again. Okay, that is so just I think it's the black and just work on the saturation 
and maybe increase the lightness a little bit. That will look quite good. And then again, increase the output size here. Okay. So that's it for the for the clothing. But if you have a closer look now here on the on the on the clothing, you may uh, see that the shape of the of the CPU doesn't look perfect. So it it's really a little bit bulky here, and this is because we use the full uh, body morph for the org And I will show you now how you can get rid of this shape and make it look better. So the big advantage of all of my packs is that I have separated head and body morph. So you can combine different head, heads with different body, but you can also use uh, different values for each slider. So if you have the orc body here, you just need to bring this down again, I think to value of around 55 will look good and the suit will look much better better now. Well, you could say, well, he's a much more muscular uh, character. So I want to have uh, uh, wider shoulders and, and uh, uh, a lot more volume in the chest and stuff like this. But you can even increase this by using the CC sliders now, which make uh, it really easy and the shape of the suit will not be so distorted like when I when you use the orc body because I designed this orc body uh, to be shown without any cloth and yeah, so let's just try to give him back a little bit of his his muscular look so by increasing the shoulder width here as well as the shoulder scale a little bit I think 20 looks good and then we can also increase the chest the depth to give him back a little bit of volume something like this will look good I think and also the chest width can be increased a little bit more yeah and all in all the the suit looks much better now than before and the the body shape in general is the same like when he's wearing no cloth maybe his neck can be increased as well, can be the length of the neck to bring this part of the color here, make it more visible again, like so, and the size. Okay, so I think that's really a, a quick and nice little trick how you can adjust the shape of cloth uh, and make it look much better than before. So just let me apply a pose to this character here. And you may see some, if you, if you pay attention to, to detail, you may see that this part of the suit doesn't look perfect at all because if you compare it to uh, real life or, or suits in real life, they tend to ha ha tend to not to go down this this far in this shape. So we can fix this in uh, in Sculptress, and I will show you now how you can do this. And for this, we just need to export the character to I avatar file. So ready for iClone 7 and then just press the export button here. 
and save it wherever you want. I will not do this now because it will take too much time. I have prepared this before. So let me just bring in this character here to iClone. And let me apply another a, a pose. This default stand to show you the what I mean. So this seam looks a little bit strange here on the character. You could try to fix this using the added motion layer and try to bring up his shoulders here a little bit. But this will not adjust it in the in the in the way I wanted it. So all you need to do is now go to the um, edit tab here and send the character to to 3D Exchange to be able to exchange the the suit mesh and export it to sculptures. So here we are in 3D Exchange. Mm, just wait. Okay. And then search for the business suit mesh here in the scene tab. And then go to the replaced mesh uh, panel in the modified tab. You can use the short key V to get there and press export mesh but before we export the mesh we should also include this pose here so that we can work on the mesh in this pose so just let me collect the clip here like so and then add motion to 3D exchange and I think it will send the post to 3D exchange and now we can export the mesh in this pose. So you can save the OBG wherever you want And then we can open Sculptress here and import the mesh. It's the business suit. No paint. And then we are we can yeah model this and bring back or let's give it a nicer shape, a much better shape. So bring up the this section here like so so I use I usually use the grab and the smooth tool here in Sculptress because these two tools are really powerful and they do really a great job and you should you should get any result you want using these two tools but of course you can also test all the other tools that are available and find the right thing for you for you, for your creation let's bring up this a little bit more here all right and then with spacebar pressed and the mouse you can change the size of the tool and then just with the smooth tool just go over the the parts that you want to be smoothed out and the program will do all the magic for you. I think that's quite enough for this presenta 
rotation here. I think we have a nice shape of the suit now. Again, could even go over this part here to bring back the original shape. And as you can see, I do everything just with the smooth tool and it works perfectly. And you can also combine this using the grab tool to bring this up. It's really up to you. I think with a with a with some practice, you will uh, find good solutions to shape your desired cloth item. So, can even bring back the shape of this button here to make it more rounded. Yeah, so I think that's quite nice. So let's export it again. Just press the export button here and then save it. You can override the original file by, but I usually tend to create a new one adding um, some kind of extension here with a mod or adjustment or whatever and then save it so that I can always go back to the original file if I made a big mistake or whatever. Yeah, and then back to 3D Exchange and use the Replace Mesh button here to replace the suit mesh. Okay, and here we are. And I think it looks much better than before. So I think we can have direct comparison here. Let me just move this out to the side and then send this to iClone using the apply to iClone button. Where it is? Oh, there. So let's bring this like so and then let's apply the pose again and here you can see the two characters in comparison and I think this looks much better than this one with just a few modifications to the mesh and you can do this with any mesh it's the same workflow even for the shoes or for the pants. So if you think that the mesh doesn't look good, just try to go to 3D Exchange and then export it and manipulate it in sculptures. It's really easy and it makes really, yeah, it, it makes really a lot. And you can even, mm, uh, sorry, you can even animated character here and there will be no problem so you could maybe just re just let me record a second here all right and then you can also adjust the sh shoulders using the edit, edit motion layer tools to bring this back yeah, and then it looks perfect. Nice one. So the only thing we have to do is to to adjust the, the light here in iClone as well so that we have the same visual result than we have in Character Creator. So just bring in an IBL. I have saved this from Character Creator before using using the Save button here. So just press this and then save it wherever you want. And then you can reuse this IBL in iClone as well. So you can work with the lighting strength here 
as well as use the ambient occlusion settings and of course adjust the light colors so use the aqua for the key light and the blue for the rim light and then just try to find the right settings for the strength and play with the rotation with the position of the light to really yeah light your character in the best possible way yeah, I think that looks quite nice here I think we could work a little bit on the on the suit textures so on the on the colors but I think that's quite quite good for this presentation I think you you get the principle uh, and yeah so I think I, I don't know what what the time says if we have still some time left yeah we got we got lots of time for uh, for Q&A so um, um, yeah if you guys have any questions uh, about the presentation or anything like that or anything you need to uh, uh, to be brought up to speed on or any questions about reillusion and stuff like that um, put them in the questions panel and we'll get to those in the next 10-15 uh, minutes here um, so you're you're good to go right Tobias you're, you're done yes I think so if there are any specific questions I can yeah I can do some little adjustments here as well cool no worries no we're good um, so Let's get to the Q&A session. Uh, thanks to Tobias for the presentation, and maybe we might need, need you to uh, pitch in a little bit for some uh, some of the answers if they relate to the uh, to the uh, presentation here. Uh, but yeah, so that's about it. Uh, so guys, get your questions in the questions panel, and we'll uh, answer those right away. We already have a few here, so I'll get to those right now. Um, first one is for Deborah Douglas. Okay. Uh, will we be able? To, uh, will this be downloadable for ca class participants? Um, I think you're talking about the orc character. Now, I know that for the um, for the present for the um, uh, special offer for the token motion content, we will be giving the vampire character for free, uh, free of charge. Uh, I'm not sure about the orc character. Uh, I didn't get any word on that. Um, but I think the the orc character contains special morphs um, that are token motion morphs. So um, the thing about giving giving the orc character is if you get the orc character, you would have to actually have the uh, morph, uh, those morphs purchased from the token motion, uh, from the content store. Uh, if you don't have those morphs purchased and you, you try to load this orc character into your uh, iClone, then you'd get a watermark probably um, because of a uh, DRM protection. Um, so I'm not sure about the orc character. I don't think so at this point, but I think that uh, when you, when you uh, take advantage of the offer that we have right now for the next few days, on Tuck Motion content, you definitely do get the vampire character. I mean, you can get this. I, I think you can get this orc uh, morph, uh, the body and the and the head, both from the content store, uh, right? Right, uh, Tobias. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're on there. I've seen yes, them before. Uh, yes, they are. Yeah, it is in the creatures pack, but you can also purchase it separately from the content store. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good point. Yeah. So there, all these are available pretty much for separate purchase. You can also go to the marketplace, uh, the marketplace for Reillusion. Um, we have them definitely available for separate purchase there, but uh, for the content store, I believe a lot of them are still for separate purchase and you can also purchase them in large packs as well. All right. So let's go to the next one. Um, Anthony asks any, the inevitable question, any update on iClone release date? Uh, so iClone 7 is currently set to be released for the uh, beginning of June. So we had originally planned for a May release, but we still have some uh, some bugs to work out. We're currently in the beta version, um, and we will be relaunching the official version in the beginning of June. So uh, hopefully that one stands. Uh, I know I've mentioned to you guys before that we are going to be releasing May, but uh, we had a little bit of a snafu, so we're still working on a couple things there. All right, so uh, next question is from Thomas. Um, does the SSS shader work in iClone, or will it come in the near future? Um, not sure what you mean by the SSS shader, uh, Thomas. So maybe uh, you can uh, clarify that later on in the question section. Um, 
I'm not sure about that. I'm not familiar with an SSS shader. Uh, so we'll go to the we'll go to the next question. That, here. That's a good point. I, oh, sorry. At the moment, I try to, uh, yeah. At the moment, I try to fake a little bit uh, subsurface scattering here with the ears. Oh. <laughs> so using the glow uh, channel here. Um, and this is just a texture that I made uh, for myself just with a I use the the diffuse texture as as, an, as my guide where the ears are located and then I just painted this a little bit red reddish here and now work with the strength of the glow to yeah fake some kind of subsurface scattering here uh, for the ears. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, subsurface scattering. That's what it is. <laughs> I never, I never see it abbreviated like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a good, good uh, point there. So SSS shader stands for subsurface scattering, which is kind of like the uh, uh, trying to create the illusion of, of semi-transparent skin, which you can see on the ear there, which is actually a pretty good example. I mean, it looks not bad. Um, you're using a glow map. Yeah, right? it looks nice. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. And you, you made that glow map uh, custom there. Yes. Oh, cool. So it's just uh, done in uh, Photoshop. Right. So you took the UV map and uh, put some, some glowing areas on there? Some. It just looks like this here in Photoshop. So. Very cool. So I use the, the diffuse as my guide where the ears are and then just painted this a little red and yeah. Cool, awesome. That's a good way to uh, simulate the uh, subsurface scattering. Now, I, I have heard talk about yeah. um, us, you know, supporting that in the future. However, I don't know particularly which version of iClone 7 it'll be, um, or if iClone 7 at all. But uh, we're, it's definitely something we're looking to in the future um, for for uh, a future update of iClone 7. So, hopefully, that answers your question there, Thomas. Um, okay, so we'll go on to the next one then. Uh, in Sculpt, just do clothes also need to be the same number of polygons when replacing the mesh in 3D Exchange like an eye avatar? I believe so. Uh, is that correct, uh, Tobias? I've, if I, if yes, I change the polygon. Always be... Yes, uh, so no polygon change, please. So it should always stay the same here when okay. you work on a mesh. Yeah, make, make sure you don't change the number of polygons on your mesh, otherwise when you try to re-import it back into uh, iClone or into 3D Exchange, rather, you'll have an error message. Uh, so that's an, an important point. Yeah. When you, when you work in Sculptures, make sure to check the options here and uh, the Beautify, Relax, Mesh and Smooth Subdivide uh, features should be turned off uh, as well as the detailed uh, slider here should also turn off because if it's on, if you work then on the, on the Mesh and take a look here on the triangles count if you work it will always add new triangles and then you will not re-import this into a 3d exchange right good point so um just for you guys information sculptures is actually a free software you can download it for free um, really cool little uh kind of like a, a zbrush light i guess you can say um, that's a good point with the with the options there and the detailed slider make sure that you have those off otherwise when you try to modify um, your paintbrush will automatically add geometry, which will not work in the end. Um, yes. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, next question. Do, 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 do. Okay. Long question here. Uh, so, this is the long question. I have to read through this here. Uh, so, okay. So Sean asks a question about using the mesh editor and character creator versus exporting to uh, to Sculptress. Now, the the mesh editor in character creator is uh, it's pretty basic. I'll just put it that way. It's it's pretty basic. I mean, uh, Sculptress, you have a, a few more tools at your disposal. It's a free software. It's a couple more steps to, to export it and import it back in again. Um, you can also use the edit mesh tool in character creator for a lot of things. Um, However, you know it's it's not it's a brand new tool it doesn't it doesn't have all the features that uh, Sculptress does. So I mean, uh, different people have different uh, pipelines, uh, different workflows for their stuff. Um, this question has come from Sean here. Um, personally, you know, like I'm kind of lazy to go into uh, Sculptress myself, but 
I found that for facial features and stuff like this, um, definitely you need to go into Sculptress a lot of the times because uh, you get much more refined uh, tools in Sculptress. Um, you know, for example, the brush size even. just We don't have really a brush size in, uh, in the edit mesh mode in, in Character Creator. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Tobias? Or? No, I would just can say, yeah, I would say if you want to do some organic modeling like on, on the character shape or whatever, I would always recommend to use Scartress because as you said, uh, the edit mesh uh, feature is quite nice for yeah, get rid of some issues with, a, with, a, um, with props or accessories or cloth, but not for organic modeling like body shapes or whatever, I would always recommend to use Sculptures then. Because with the smooth and, and, and the grab tools, you have much better uh, yeah, control of what you are doing there, in my opinion, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I share the same opinion there. I mean, maybe someday yeah. the edit mesh mode will have those kind of tools and will uh, you know, have much more uh, uh, more detailed tools for refinement of the skin and stuff. But uh, for now, for that sort of, uh, like, like Tobias mentioned, organic type of modification, I would recommend using uh, uh, Sculptress instead. Um, so that answers the next couple of questions. We had a couple of questions about, is Sculptress a second program? Uh, yes, it is. Um, you can just Google Sculptress. You should be able to find it. It's like a super uh, light program. Wouldn't doesn't take up much space on your on your computer. Um, and Jeff talked about or Jeff was asking about the default settings for Sculptress. I believe uh, Tobias just showed that. Again, guys, we'll be recording this webinar. Uh, we are recording this webinar as we speak. So if you have any any questions uh, or anything that you missed and stuff like that, you can always we'll be sending you a link and you can review that link. Um, at any time at your own leisure. Uh, if things go a little bit too fast for you, if you miss something, uh, don't fear. We'll have uh, the recording uh, available for you following this webinar. Okay, so another question from Thomas asking, uh, will it also work with human skin textures? Yes, uh, exporting the Sculptress, uh, we just mentioned exporting Sculptress for the human skin textures is actually the recommended uh, way. At this point, it's recommended more than uh, using the edit mesh mode in Character Creator. Yes, I, I did this on the vampire creation. Uh, I worked on the, um, on the characters mesh there, on the skin mesh, uh, and maybe you can check out the, the recording. Uh, I think it will be also uploaded to the YouTube channel, uh, so you can check out this video as well. All right, so good. Uh, uh, Frank has another question that I think is pretty cool, a pretty important question, actually. Uh, he's saying, can I put the suit morph into the contents, uh, content box, content window, for iClone or character creator so I can use it on other characters, too? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a, uh, an yes. option. Yeah, you just save it as a custom suit, is that right? Yes, you, yes, you, you could save uh, the whole uh, avatar here. So... Uh, let me just do this quickly. Just a second. You should be able to save the uh, the suit in Character Creator as well, is that right? I think. Yeah, but we just need to bring this character to Character Creator. So. Oh right. Okay. I've actually never done this myself. It's I just, just because. <laughs> Yeah, it's just because the feature added in Character Creator isn't uh, available at the moment here in this early access uh, version. So I just need to save this as an I avatar and drag it up to uh, Character Creator. It's nice to look at the very real can save uh, the PBR textures on the character's skin. It looks really nice just without lighting. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah. yeah, nice one. So, and here you can save the suit and uh, as a custom. Um, as a custom item. Let me just select the suit. And then save it in the custom folder. And then you can apply it on every char char character you want.
there it is. But of course, as we, as we adjusted it to the shape of the orc body, it may look not that good on different body shapes. So, yeah, that's a good point. Just you try, try to conform, use a conform tool that you like you did before, um, and that kind of uh, uh, leads to my next question from uh, from Deborah here. She she says, "I noticed that you use the morph button. Uh, what would the conform button have done? Would that have made the suit fit the character better?" Did Did you get that? Um, yes. Um, of course, yes, it would have. Uh, so it would have fit better, but you want. Uh, get such a nice um, shape of the shoulders here just using the conform button so yeah conform is basically like auto calculation um, and you know sometimes yes. that's going to work sometimes it may be a little bit different you know nobody's perfect it's, even the computers aren't perfect when it comes to this stuff so uh, a little bit of manual editing is also uh, required in certain cases as well yes Oh, okay, so hopefully that answers that so question. If you want to have, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you want to have it perfect, if you want to have it perfect, then I think you should. You you will need to to make a little manual work on on this. Good point. Okay, so question from Sterling here um, on a slightly different part of the character creation process. When you design a custom head morph in ZBrush, what do you need to do to avoid problems for facial animation morphs? Have you ever come across that issue before? Uh, not yet, because I don't use ZBrush, to be honest. <laughs> I just use Sculptress uh, for my uh, morph creations. Uh, but all in all, I I think you ha you pay it you have to pay attention a little bit on on the eyes, uh, uh, not to make it too big, and and stuff like this. But all in all, it will work quite quite well the yeah. animation I, I agree the eyes are definitely a trouble spot that you need to look out for when you uh, do the custom facial morphs if you do that in ZBrush or, or uh, Sculptress um, the eyes tend to cause the most problem because they're they're basically stationary in the head and if you know certain parts of your of your face are you know stretched to certain extremities then you know maybe your eyeballs will start popping out of the head or something like that or you know you get some, some problems with the eyes so it's it's a lot of trial and error, but uh, I, I think the biggest tip that I can give, um, maybe Tobias can add on to this later, but the biggest tip that I can give is just, you know, watching out for the eyes, making sure they're not too large in most cases, or the skin surrounding the eyes aren't too close to the actual eyes themselves. Yes. I mean, you, you can also adjust the uh, settings in 3D Exchange later to bring uh, the eyelid down even further if it doesn't close uh, correct, uh, but but all in all, try not to be too extreme when you morph uh, shapes, uh, head shapes, or whatever. Very good point. Because then you also, will also stretch the, the the skin texture really quickly, and and so yeah, you have to pay attention a little bit. Yeah, definitely a little bit of trial and error in a lot of cases. Um, so a question from Tom yes. asking how you can apply the scars. Um, can you just show exactly where you apply the scars? I think you've already applied them here, it looks like. So um, maybe just show for Tom again, just one yeah, moment. That's... Yeah. In the, yes. in, in yes. the experience editor there. Um, if anyone's wondering, the scars are the um, are the handouts in the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel. Those are the uh, texture maps that I put in the handout section. So you can actually apply these yourself. These are part of the uh, Character Creator Essential Learning Pack. You can find that on the content store. It's called uh, Character Creator Essential Learning Pack. Just Google it or something and then uh, you should be able to find it. Uh, I can probably put a link in the description as, or in the uh, chat window here as well. It's a, it's a really good pack to have if you're going to do any of this stuff yourself. Essential Learning Pack. This should be the first thing that pops up. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this in the uh, chat window. So if you guys want to go ahead and find this pack, check it out there. And uh, so uh, Tobias is kind of loading up the uh, the appearance editor for the skin, I believe, right? Yes, I just need to 
um, put on an, an, an prepared skin because we I just had this saved iAvatar file and then uh, the texture is uh, flattened so I need to bring a new substance texture here to be able to, to work with the appearance editor. All right, so you're converting just to PBR right now, right? Is that what you're doing? No, I just applied uh, a new uh, oh, a texture to the oh. character because uh, because the the one from the eye avatar from iClone was flattened because we exported it. So gotcha. Yeah, the questions panel is in my way. So. <laughs> Couldn't see what you were doing. Yeah, okay. So and the scars, uh, you just work with the decals here with the decals uh, section, and here you can see the diffuse normal. And you can find these in this, um, who, what was this called, uh, the essential learning pack. Yeah. There you have all the uh, the stars and then just load in the diffuse, the normal and the specular maps. And then you can work with the rotation here of the, maybe let's check which, all right, it's the one. Um, maybe I just need to. Sometimes it's the width and the height um, that you need to really kind yeah. of stretch out. It's kind of annoying sometimes. Yeah, work with the rotate. Uh, here you can see it how I rotate the the scar on the skin, and you can also work with the offset to bring it to the side or move it up or down. And then the scale to make it bigger. So something like this. All right, I have a question here. I just want to get to really quickly from uh, from Michael asking: Is 3D Exchange for iClone seven in iClone? Um, currently, we have uh, only 3D Exchange six, but um, 3D Exchange, I think, uh, for iClone seven. Um, in the future, we're gonna. It's gonna basically be a plugin. Now, I think that. I think the product launch for that is maybe end of this year. Uh, I can't be certain. If you want to get the actual uh, cl uh, more accurate release date, because um, I haven't been updated on the release date for 3D Exchange the 7 uh, for probably a couple months. We're always changing the, uh, the, the date. So just email me, kai at reillusion.com, and I can probably get you an updated, uh, you know, estimated release date. Again, you know, it's estimated. So um, take it with a grain of salt uh, for Michael. Um, so, uh, next question is from uh, David asking, can you post a link to the content page you mentioned at the beginning of the webinar? Uh, so, David, we're actually going to be sending out an email uh, to you guys, so make sure you check your email, and we'll, we'll provide a link to that uh, page for the webinar. Uh, that page isn't completed yet, so I can't really send out the link at this moment, but we'll be sending it out um, momentarily uh, after this webinar for you guys. Um, we just need to do a couple of quick modifications to it. So uh, make sure you check your email for that uh, special offer uh, page there. Um, so question from Jeff asking, how did you separate the head and body meshes um, to uh, Tobias? So maybe you can explain a little bit about how you did that. Uh, yeah. So in, in general, this is uh, the creation process. So I usually work first on the, on the head. So work, I uh, uh, have the, um, the default male shape that I start with. Just let me load this in here. And then I just work on the head at the beginning. And as soon as it is ready, I save uh, this as a morph slider and then work on the body. So it's really um, yeah, my workflow that I uh, develop. So I think I think what Jeff might want to know is when you when you uh, have the separate morphs for the head and for the body, how do you save those out as separate morphs? Um, using the create morph slider button here, uh, create and then morph slider, and then you can set the category where you want to save the if if it's a head slider or if it's a body slider. Is it this what you mean? Or? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's what he's kind of asking about, like, 
how do you how do you separate the the head and body yeah. meshes for uh, you can modify them separately but when you want to save them out with separate sliders um, you have to go to this morph slide uh, morph slider editor um, yeah that's, a, that's a, a good point for I think a lot of people who uh, may want to make their own custom morphs here as well you need to uh, get this uh, go to this morph slider editor there so you often you, you often use this when you're uh, creating your own morphs correct yes but if you create uh, if you want to create a head morph separately, you 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 uh, want to work on the body because I don't know if it's still an iClone Seven because if you um, if you uh, work also on the body and save it even in just in this head set category, it will also morph the body, all the changes that you did on the body will also be morphed with the head. So it's it's a little bit complicated. I don't know if you get it, but uh, um, make sure if you, <laughs> maybe Kai, maybe you can explain this better. Uh, so Yeah, I, I think um, what, um, what, what uh, Twice is saying here is um, when you, when you uh, even though you set the category to head, if you have modified the body, then when you apply that head slider in the future, the body will modify as well, uh, which is something that you don't want. And I'm not sure if we fixed that either because I haven't uh, created a morph slider in probably half a year. Um, uh, that may be still be an issue, but just as a precaution for everybody, um, if you're you know creating your own uh, head sliders, uh, custom head sliders, make sure that you uh, do not modify the body while you're creating that sl uh, slider itself, um, just to, to avoid that kind of issue there. Um, okay, we have a couple more questions here. We may actually be like, you know, decent for time here. Um, okay, so Sterling, I can probably answer this one. Sterling asks, can you effectively use the texture settings shader type to change character creator 1.5 characters to PBR based characters? Um, uh, yes, you can do that, definitely. Um, I think we showed that earlier. Um, you converted your skin texture from, uh, after, you, after Tobias applied the Realistic Humans 100 texture on the head there, he then converted all the uh, skin textures to PBR. Um, but still he mentions when I do that, I lose the natural shine of the skin and everything looks extremely dry. Now this is because what, uh, what iClone will do is it will convert the, um, your specular and your glossiness map. It will convert those to metallic and roughness maps uh, um, respectively. Now, the specular and glossiness maps and, and uh, metallic and roughness maps, they're not exactly the same. Um, so what you may need to do is you may need to actually just uh, tweak those maps themselves. So you'll, you'll have a, a map in your roughness uh, tab or in the roughness uh, section there, and you'll have a uh, uh, metallic uh, swatch there as well. Uh, so what you want to do is you know, take those into maybe Photoshop and modify them. You can also right-click on them as well. Um, in the uh, just right click on the actual texture itself and then you have an option to adjust to tweak it uh, that way as well if you do that in iClone. Um, so uh, I, I know Sterling so maybe Sterling you can email me if, you, if that's not clear to you there so uh, hopefully that answers your question. You need to tweak the, uh, the roughness and metallic uh, values there. Uh, so Deborah asks the van where's the vampire character you spoke of? Um, I think that's the one on the screen correct? Uh, Tobias? Um, no, that's the goblin. I oh, okay. created a vampire <laughs> using the goblin morph. So uh, the the vampire is a totally new character. So okay, so that'll be that'll be the one you guys get um, uh, in the uh, if you take advantage of the um, offer that we're giving you here uh, in this webinar. Um, question about uh, question from Perry rather. Uh, do you need 3D Exchange pipeline in order to export the mesh to Sculptress? Uh, yes, yeah, so you'll need, you'll need uh, 3DX Pipeline. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, just so everyone's aware, you'll need the Pipeline version because if you want to export anything from iClone to uh, external formats such as OBJ, EVH, uh, one rule of thumb to remember is whenever you're exporting from iClone to another uh, format for use in external tools, you, you will need the Pipeline. However, if you're importing stuff into iClone, I don't think you'll need the Pipeline for that. Uh, now there is um, a an addition comparison page. If you just type in like something like uh, 3D Exchange Edition Comparison, I can probably Google that and put it in the chat window for you guys later. Um, but that'll tell you which versions uh, do what. 
right? So just as a rule of thumb, if you want to export anything from iClone, you will need the pipeline version, so keep that in mind. Okay, good question from Peter that come, coming up next here. Can you create non-human characters in Character Creator? Uh, at this moment, we are only we are restricted to biped characters, uh, you know, uh, characters with two legs that you see on the screen right now. So currently, there's no non-human characters uh, that can be created in Character Creator. However, I can confirm that we are working on that for future versions. Now, when that's going to be incorporated into Character Creator, I can't really tell you, but uh, we definitely have that in the works. And we, uh, want, we want to get uh, non-human character creation uh, in Character Creator in the future. We're going to, you know, this is only the second version of this, of this software. So I think, you know, so far for the second version, it's doing pretty well. Uh, there's definitely a lot that we can improve. So if you guys have any, you know, feedback or any suggestions, um, you know, feel free to give us, a, give us an email. Uh, shoot us an email with some suggestions that, uh, you know, would help you in your workflow. We're always, you know, listening and looking for, uh, for suggestions uh, to help out our users. You know, so feel free, to, feel free to email that to us, and we can always forward it to our develop, uh, development team who uh, looks over all the, all the feedback very carefully. Um, okay. So, okay, uh, good question. Da, 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 da. Uh, so, okay, so good. I think we're pretty much done. Last question from Erwin. Uh, when will the next character creator minor revision be released? I can't tell you that, unfortunately. We always, I always get these questions, you know, when, when is this going to be released? When is that going to be released? And the marketing guys say, oh, we're going to release it in, uh, you, know, you know, May 2008 or 2018. And then, you know, the, the programmers are like, what? That's impossible. We can't, we can't do it by that time. And then, uh, you know, things get all mixed up. And uh, so there's always stuff going back and forth. I can't really give you solid, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a genie. I can't really give you the... Uh, predictions for the future, I guess. So uh, a profit, I guess, would be the right term, um, unfortunately. So uh, apologies for that, guys. Um, I'd like to be able to give you more inf information on that. Um, but yeah, I think we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much done with the questions there. Um, we're relatively on time. It maybe went like 10 minutes over there. But uh, I wanted to really thank everyone here uh, for attending this this webinar. Hopefully you learned a lot. And I wanted to also extend thanks to uh, Tobias here for kind of showing us his workflow in, in creating our character. Um, all the way from Germany, where I think it's like something like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. right now. Um, so apologies for to him for making him stay up so late. 3, 3 a.m. <laughs> Holy it's, smokes. It's 3, 3 a.m., yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm time here for the, bed now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm here on the West Coast uh, for dinner time. I'm about to, about to go out and barbecue some steaks, so I'm going to get out of here. Oh, pretty, that pretty sounds good. nice. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to that. So I'm glad all the questions are finished, and uh, we've uh, had our webinar, and... Uh, Again, thanks everyone for attending. You can email us, uh, email me rather, kai at relusion.com, K-A-I at relusion.com for any further questions. Make sure you fill out the, the survey and get your $10 gift certificate and check out the, uh, the content store with Tobias' special offer there. And again, we'll be providing you with a uh, separate recording of this webinar in case you missed anything. So uh, thanks again to Tobias and thank you everyone for attending. And I'm going to leave it at that and uh, we'll see you in the next uh, tutorial or webinar.